Service to others is one of the foundation stones for good human beings and Islam encourages every Muslim to do this. Assalamu alaikum. As the saying goes, it may be cold outside, but it's warm in front of the TV. Welcome to this week's Anur the Light. Bashira Surti is a person who pours her heart and soul into the upliftment of children with disabilities. Early childhood development forms the foundation of how an individual perceives their world and learns to cope. For children who have conditions that are mentally, socially, emotionally, physically or developmentally disabling, this phase is even more essential to their upbringing. Bashira Surti has dedicated her life to inclusive education and uses her skill set as an occupational therapist to ensure that these children have a fighting chance. An occupational therapist is like Superman or Superwoman, basically, but um, an OT, it has quite a broad definition, and basically what occupational therapists do is we enable people to live their best and fullest lives as independently as possible. So you get different areas, you get um, OTs that work with children, OTs that work with the elderly, OTs that work with people with disabilities, or OTs that just work in communities as well. Um, so it's quite broad, but it's about enabling people to be as functional and independent as possible. Bashira is currently running a workshop with the empowerment team at Africa Tikkun in Johannesburg on how to run small group activities with young children. These workshops aim to address the challenges of children with developmental delays in early childhood development centres. I've been an occupational therapist for 10 years now. Um, and it's been, I think it's been a good career choice for what I want to do. Um, I always feel that occupational therapists are undervalued um, because there's so much more that we can contribute with towards community building um, and not just individual one-on-one -on -one therapy with a child, which is as important. There's a lot more um, that we can do with regards to the problem-solving skills that we're actually given in order to make change happen within communities. So the main challenges um, with running something like Diketo Inclusive Education is definitely funding. Um, as much as it's a social enterprise and that we do training and um, so that we get some funding out of there, a lot of the consulting and a lot of the um, customized facilitation of inclusion also comes at a fee, um, which not all ECD centres can cover. Often witnessing the isolation and exclusion of children with disabilities from early childhood development programs, Bashira believes that all children can develop optimally and therefore contribute positively towards growth in their societies. Due to this belief, she has started creating a model that promotes inclusion in the ECD environment. Bashira, she has been helping us a lot in terms of understanding the behavior of the children and understanding children with uh, special needs. Through the support that she gave us, the, the, the workshop that she gave the teachers, and also monitoring, not giving workshop and leaving them, keep on monitoring them and checking if they, have, they are doing it and which, which are the challenges that they are facing within the child itself. And she also developed the questions that the teachers need to, to be aware of and also the program that they need to, to work on it when they work with the particular child. Diketo Inclusive Education was founded in 2007 by Bashira, who puts 100% of herself into the building and makeup of the program, making sure that every child within her reach with a disability can receive the education they require. My role is to access services for parents and caregivers of children with disabilities. Bashira, she's helping us in assisting children who's got developmental delays, children who's got learning barriers in their classrooms. Because we are working together with the ECT practitioners. Whenever a teacher is seeing a problem with a child, they are coming to us and let us know the problem that the child is facing. Normally the procedure of that, they just write the note of during the 
morning rings or daily activities, what is the challenges that a, a child is facing. Once they've come to us and let us know about the, the, the challenges that a child is facing, we let Bashira to know and then she's gonna come in our office and then we have to assess the, uh, to assess the child. Working toward inclusive education involves a mindset shift for the South African nation, with the efforts of people like Bashira, an all-inclusive society catering to the needs of the differently abled is certainly an ideal that can become a reality for us all. I have nothing but great love and respect for Bashira. She shows that humility is not just a word, but an action that improves the world around us. Next up is this week's Street Style, straight from the City of Gold. Style is important. I think it's a personal reflection of yourself. Uh, it's something that should come from deep within you. Uh, it's something that will be your signature footprint when interacting with other people. My personal style is classic with a modern flavor. Uh, I believe in incorporating elements of the classic gentleman in everything that I do, but um, you know, just with a slightly more modern cut. This particular outfit we call the Rainmaker. The reason why we call it the Rainmaker is traditionally a Rainmaker was somebody who would be brought in to bring in sales for a business. They allow it to rain money. Um, I've decided to call this outfit that because I believe when a gentleman is dressed in this particular outfit, hopefully he'll be able to allow it to rain money. Uh, some design elements of this particular outfit is that you'll find that it has a one button slanting lapel. This is in fact our own design. You know, it's just simple and it allows it to be a bit more on the elegant side as well. What we've done is a peak lapel, so this is known as a peak lapel. It's a little bit more stylized with a slight piping there which matches the waistcoat. We also have this detail which is unique to Cavalier. This is known as a crossed sleeve. This allows the cuffling to be displayed through the suit itself. There's so many elements that are involved in the dressing of a gentleman. You know, you would be able to have a suit crafted, but you need to be able to wear the suit as well. In this case, accessories bring the whole outfit together. It all creates a seamless environment for the person to express themselves. So what we have here with this particular combination is that I decided to go for a lighter blue shirt to offset the burgundy color. We then dressed it with a knitted tie in a burgundy and gold color. That again complements the color of the suit. It brings in the elements of burgundy there. On the lapel, we have a little lapel pin. This particular one is a dragon. Uh, I have a certain affinity for dragons. But again, you'll notice that it is in a rose gold color. So the rest of my details are also in rose gold. Uh, the way of, of style would dictate that you need to be matching the metals that you wear on your body. This again just brings the outfit together and just makes it a little bit more seamless. I've, I've wanted to be an entrepreneur for, for, for many years of my life. I'm actually an admitted attorney by qualification, but uh, this is my passion. Uh, it's something that I've, I've wanted to create uh, and something that I've wanted to forge where I'm able to provide gentlemen with a place where they can feel special, where I'm able to craft the world's most beautiful suits and dress men in the best possible way. When you come into the store, it's not even really a store. We call it the theater of style. It is a place where magic happens, where amazing things transpire. If you've had a custom-made suit done by Cavalier, you'll, you'll understand the experience of having a garment fitted exactly for your body. It is one in seven and a half billion. As a Muslim in South Africa, I want to state how proud I am of the contribution my community makes every day to this country. Just take a look at our next story, where a special needs school is being held by local members and children of all races and faiths are benefiting. Thousands of South African children with special needs remain without access to education. 
Bilkis Mustafa took it on herself to start the special needs school after recognizing this need in her own community. Uh, the special needs school was founded in 2007. Um, it was during the time of my studies in, in the field of psychology um, that I learned and worked with an autistic child uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis that was like homeschooled him for about two years. And uh, the reason why he needed homeschooling was because there was no other school for him. And after working with him and seeing the, the progress that he has made, um, many of the other parents have learned that, you know what, uh, there is a child, he's being homeschooled, can you do this for my child? So that is how we actually founded the school and uh, we've grown uh, from, for example, if I started off with a class of special needs children, we are now sitting with seven classrooms. Having grown up in the area, Bilkis came straight back to her roots. She approached the school she attended for premises to start her school and has grown to accommodate children from surrounding areas too. Start off as a small project when she approached us some time ago, I think over 10 years ago, and we looked at her proposal and her thoughts and we were quite uh, excited about her passion in terms of helping those who needed help. We are thrilled to be continuing our association with Bilkis and we hope to continue for many, many more years. Bilkis' passion for children with special needs has taken her beyond the call of duty. She has recently included equine therapy at the underprivileged school, allowing these children access to animals and therapies that will improve their way of life. Equine therapy does wonders for autistic children. It's a horse, and when you actually do horse riding, it's, it's an exercise for an, your entire body. And specifically for uh, an autistic child, because the movement of the horse, whilst the child is on the horse, it mimics the movement of a person walking or a person running. This movement helps the muscles to become softer and, and more uh, workable. Um, we do grooming, um, they braid the hair of the horse. Uh, we've actually trained the horses uh, for special needs children before bringing it to the school. We have um, an exercise with the ball. So if we throw the ball at the child, now the child's concentration is sitting on the horse for balance, as well as trying to catch the ball while sitting on the horse. So that helps with the eye-hand coordination. So a lot of the therapy done with the horse itself is very beneficial and yet with the children it's like just fun. Bill Keese doesn't only offer child education, she also gives guidance and advice to parents of special needs children to ensure the whole family knows how to cope. When parents um, came to me, uh, many of them said that they were actually told that no school will be able to keep their children. Then parents came to me and said, can my child be cured of autism? Um, what is the way forward for my child? I then decided to do is actually um, have this magazine printed out and we put out articles with that hope that, you know what, it will spread the awareness. And much of our awareness programs have helped parents see that my child has potential. It has nothing to do with um, a teaching degree. It has nothing to do with you being a psychologist. It has to do with your passion, your understanding of the learner, a lot of patience, and the zest to say, I want to help this child go forward. Because I found that my passion lied with these children that were not heard or seen. Catering to children with special needs truly is a calling and one that Bilkis has embraced as her purpose in life. The requirement for special needs education in South Africa is on the rise and people like Bilkis are doing their part to ensure equal education for all. Alhamdulillah, we say shukr to Allah for giving us people who think more of the well-being of the less fortunate and continuously give more than what is necessary to better their lives. Time now for the beautiful words of the Holy Quran. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you. The beautiful rendition is of chapter Al Kawthar, speaking of an abundance of good. This chapter is short in size, consisting of three verses only, but it, it is profound in meaning. It speaks about focus, and it speaks about naysayers, and those who would like to draw you into negativity, but know that their words stay and rest with them. They are unable to affect you, touch you, if you are strong in mind and character. No matter what others say, inna kal kawthar. Really, we have given you an abundance of good. Think about all the good surrounding us as individuals. No matter what others think or say. People can be cruel with their words and think nothing of uttering mm, things of abuse regarding others. Sometimes we utter abuse mm, pertaining to others or regarding others, thinking it elevates us in the eyes of our addressees. But the naysayers do not progress. Al Hasud la Yasud, he who is filled with enmity and jealousy, will never lead, will never grow, will never advance. So do not worry about what others say, but you focus. Fasalli. So pray Rabbika to your Lord one har and work hard, sacrifice, and do as much as you can. For verily, in Nashaniak, those who seek to in anger you, those who seek to draw out the bad in you, who al abatar, those individuals, they will be cut off from any benefit and any progress. Because they stick uh, with the actions of others and they keep their minds on trying to undermine others. There's no progress in uh, the lives of people who are criticizing or are critical of others all the time. Let's reflect and introspect and see as to where we find ourselves in our lives and do not be concerned about the words and attitudes of others, but rather work towards an individual state of progress and effort and let others find themselves uh, in their own time. Thank you. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We hope the few minutes you spend with us inspire you as Muslims and as South Africans. Lamia Zatoy is ready with a lekker chicken wrap recipe. Assalamu alaikum. My children's favorite lunchtime treat is a wrap. I do a variety of things with these, but I can always keep it simple. But sometimes you just want a posh wrap, and that's exactly what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So to start off with my decadent wraps, you're going to crumb some camembert cheese. And for that, I've got a ring of camembert cheese. I dip those into beaten egg, and then you dip them into some bread crumbs. I prefer the cornflake crumb, though, because I find that it's crunchier. And then to go with that is a blue cheese sauce, which essentially starts off with a roux of butter and equal portions of flour, a little bit of milk just to make the sauce, and then the decadent part, some blue cheese. I'll be using about 60 grams of blue cheese. If you don't like the blue cheese flavor, feel free to substitute that with a Gruyere cheese. You could even use a cheddar cheese or just a simple white sauce is as good. And then our grilled chicken. So it's not quite grilled as much as it is pan fried. So salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic, and of course the piece de resistance in your posh wrap is your cranberry sauce. So we're going to start off with our bechamel sauce. And I'm using about 60 grams of butter. Please use butter, not margarine. There is nothing worse than margarine. And then to about 60 grams of butter, I would add an equal portion of flour so that your sauce has just the right consistency. Okay, so now that I can hear my flour starting to sizzle, I add my milk and I do this a little bit at a time. It thickens fairly quickly. And the reason why I use a whisk at this point is to make sure that there are no lumps. And when it starts to thicken like it is right about now, this is when I add my blue cheese and in it goes. Oh, smelling so good. And to this, I'm gonna add some pepper. 
and of course some salt. And the great thing with these pots is that they stay long, warm for up to 20 minutes and now I'm going to start heating up my pan. So while this is getting warm, what I'm going to prepare is my camembert cheese. So be careful to clean your knife clean because camembert is an incredibly creamy, soft cheese. And I take a piece of camembert into the egg and you crumb your camembert. So you can start to hear the sizzle and remember the order that you put these in because that's the order that we're turning them over in. So, our assembly line is getting there. Our blue cheese sauce is done. Fried camembert is done. So now we're going to do our chicken breasts. And then I'm just going to do salt, some black pepper. Just give that a good rub around. Add a teaspoon of garlic directly to my oil, just to get the flavor going. And they literally just take about a minute on each side and they're done. And we'll just keep doing this until all of our chicken is done. And now our assembly line starts. So what we've got is our chicken and fried camembert, our cranberry sauce, our rocket leaves, and while the pan's still warm, what I'm going to just do is lightly, just ever so lightly, stick these in and give them a light toast. So what I like to start off with is my blue cheese sauce. We take a bit of blue cheese, then we add a little bit of cranberry jelly. This also adds just some sweetness. And of course, you could always argue that it's really, really good for you. And what I like is loads of rocket leaves. Because this essentially is the only crunch that you've got in the salad. Then we're gonna add our pieces of fried camembert. And then your chicken breast. And then it's all about the roll. And a secret little toothpick just to hold it all together. And there you have delicious Posh wraps, perfect for any lunch or outdoor occasion. So until next time, assalamu alaikum. If you want to know how to make some of these delicious meals, then log on to YouTube where you'll find this and past episodes. Well, that's it for this week. Shukran for tuning in and assalamu alaikum from me, Zahra Robinson. Mm -hmm.